Every year, great travelers pass through the homelands of the Cree along James Bay. These feathered superheroes are known as shorebirds. The two main families of shorebirds seen on the James Bay coast include the Scolopacidae or sandpiper family, which generally have long, thin bills to probe into mud, silt, or sand, and the Charadreidae or plover family, whose bills are shorter and more stout. Both families have relatively long legs for walking or running on the shore and long wings to assist them in their long migratory flights. Most of the shorebirds seen along the coast of James Bay are born to the north in the subarctic and arctic in the early summer. Their parents start their south migrations before their little ones in late July or early August. They gather along the tidal flats, beaches, rocky headlands, and coastal wetlands of James Bay to feed, rest, and find safety in numbers from predators. A large proportion of the Rufa Red Knot and Hudsonian Godwit global populations stop along James Bay before continuing all the way to the southern tip of South America, making a round trip of about 30,000 kilometers per year. These migrations include non-stop flights over the Atlantic Ocean that cover thousands of kilometers over several days. Their long migration routes are broken up by many stopovers and key places to fill up the gas tank. And, not unlike a gas station, these stopovers are essential to meet the needs of the travelers. Food, shelter, and rest to continue the next leg of their journey. Sadly, oil contamination is common along ocean coasts. Significant contact with oil can be a death sentence for a shorebird. Fall migration is the same time as tropical storm season. A small bird is no match against 100 plus kilometer winds and driving rains. Every year, stopover habitat is lost along the migration route to human uses, from city expansion to resorts to shrimp farms. Along the Atlantic, Pacific and Caribbean coasts of North, Central and South America, shorebirds face another threat, growing populations of feral cats and dogs. While birds can fly away, the threat can prevent them from feeding properly or resting. Finally, there are the people themselves. Beaches and coastlines attract people for recreational activities that can scare shorebirds away. In some countries, hunting of shorebirds is far too common. Each of these threats contributes to the population decline of many species of shorebirds. For example, the endangered Rufa Red Knot. For every 10 of them 50 years ago, there is now only one. They desperately need our help. We have a lot of animals that come, in, come into our area, birds flying through. And it's, it's not um, recognized that they're at risk. And coming here and listening to people that I've met so far and, and talking about the red knot, it's like, this guy is really, really important here. Here on James Bay, the threats are fairly minor compared to the USA coast or the coasts of Mexico or South America. Their habitat is also habitat for geese and ducks, which are staples in the diet of the Cree. Currently, these areas are healthy, relatively free from disturbance from people or feral animals, and without industrial activities or threat from oil spills. Some of the Cree communities are doing things to help these birds, with their partners in government, researchers, and non-governmental groups. They are counting shorebirds, especially the red knots. They are watching to see if they have any colored flags or bands on their legs, and recording the color and number if they can see it well. The color of the flag tells us in which country the bird was captured and banded. 
They are helping scientists on the west side of the bay to capture and mark these birds. They are putting special transmitters on some of them and installing antennae to detect when birds with transmitters fly past. These things are happening in other places also, like Delaware Bay near New Jersey, in the Mingan Islands in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, on the Gulf Coast of Texas, on the north coast of Brazil, and on the southern tip of Chile in South America. All of this is being done to help these birds. If you live on the east side of James Bay, talk with your local EU Marine Region Officer or your CTA officer to learn more about shorebirds in your area and possibly to help out with an active project. For communities on the west side of James Bay, contact the Moose Cree Lands and Resources Department for more information or to participate in a project. Check out our new comic about Rufus the Red Knot and a year in his life. This video was produced by Shannon Murray for Nature Canada and its partners, working to conserve shorebirds along the coasts of James Bay.